Hey guys, Chris Dick here. So today I thought I would add a, uh, another lesson to my virtual machines on Azure series. Uh, one of the things that I um, haven't really talked too much about is the DNS. And um, oftentimes when you restart your, um, your virtual machines, you commonly lose your public DNS. Now there's, there's advantages and disadvantages for doing that. It's sometimes good to just be able to recycle those, cycle those uh, public IP addresses. And the reason I have been doing it is more about a security factor. We just don't want other people accessing our virtual machines. Now, when, uh, when we want to look at this, um, if we go through our common usage of this, I'm going to use my name node here as an example. Um, I've got my IP address, and if I flip back over here, you'll see this is my IP address. And um, what I would like to be able to do, rather than changing my IP address every time I, I shut it down, if I can always refer to it to a specific DNS name, um, just like if you type in a website like facebook.com, it's going to go there, or youtube.com, it goes directly to, to there. What we're going to do now is we're going to give our, uh, our virtual machine a DNS that's publicly accessible. So let's, uh, let's go into our Azure portal here, and we're going to click on this DNS name, and it's going to say not configured. And it's a really simple thing to do here. Azure makes this really easy. Um, what you can do is you can set it up so that you can say, you can call your, I'm going to call this one name node, for example. Um, but you want to think about this because this DNS has to be unique. All right. Because if everybody just called it name node.canadaeast.cloudapp.azure.com, um, eventually you wouldn't be able to access it anymore because someone would own it first. So here's the trick. Um, I always like to put some sort of unique identifier, uh, and that can be really anything. Um, it can be like this, something like that would be fine. Um, you can put in your name, put in something that's a unique identifier so that you're more likely to be able to reserve that name. Okay. Now, um, I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And once it's available, we can then change our, go back over to virtual machines. We can now change uh, the IP address in WinSCP to use our DNS. Okay. So if I click into there, click save, click login, I now uh, want to just update, of course. Yes, I'm going to update that security, and uh, now I'm I'm uh, I'm in using a DNS. Now this can be really helpful if I shut down my uh, my na uh, name node or my virtual machine, um, because it won't really make any difference what the IP address is anymore. It's always going to be referring to it by name. So underneath the hood, something is happening with the IP address. The dynamic uh, DNS is giving the, um, the record um, for the DNS, the name and IP address is keeping that key pair uh, available to us. So um, we've configured our uh, virtual machine to have a name node or sorry, a DNS name. Um, we've worked on uh, giving our WinSCP a, an access to the host name through a DNS, which is pretty cool. And I've also showed you how to convert your uh, security keys to a PPK, which allows us to access uh, that way as well. So, that's it for today, guys. Remember to like and share, and thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.